Hi folks, I'm Chuck Black, and I've been promoting the idea that if you go through this 52 weeks of Python, which actually, as it turns out, is 74 videos, so it's more than 52 weeks, or if you do at least start out with the shorter version of this, which are 10 minute introductory pieces on the same topics, that if you do that and you understand what I'm talking about, then you will be able to build something like this. This is uh, Quokka Prime. So Quokka Prime is similar to what I did originally Quokka, but it's a little bit different. Uh, the architecture of it is down here in the corner. You can see some of what it does. It keeps track of devices and hosts and services. It allows you to do packet capture. It allows you to do um, port scans. It allows you to do trace routes. It allows you to do a bunch of other stuff as well. And so uh, not only is there this graphical user interface, but there's also a command line or terminal based user interface that I created as well. So all of these things, I am promoting the idea that you too will be able to do if you just take the time to go through this course. And I stand by that 100%. But it occurred to me, some of you may be interested in understanding okay, well, what exactly is this? And the course, that's a lot of weeks to invest in going through this course. Can you just tell me exactly what Quokka Prime is so that I can understand it and learn about what its capabilities are? And the answer to that is yes, that's what I'm going to be doing in these next uh, sessions that I come up with. So as an overview of what we will be going through in these lessons, this is a picture of the architecture of Quokka Prime. What you will be learning about is how to write Python code, simple Python code, to monitor devices in your network. You will be uh, writing code, learning how to write code that will monitor, discover, monitor, and scan hosts in your network. And you will be learning how to write code that will monitor services like HTTP services in the cloud or in your own environment or wherever that might be. You will learn how to write user interfaces such as this that will allow you to uh, create these nice terminal displays that you see over here in the picture. You will learn how to create functionality that does things like port scans and packet capture and trace route using some of the packages and tools that are available in Python. You'll learn about how to do messaging between uh, other nodes, between different uh, entities in your environment. Probably more importantly, you'll learn about how to write a Flask server, server, a Flask server being a web application that is able to handle REST APIs. So you'll learn about REST APIs. You'll learn about using JSON with those. You'll learn about storing stuff in a database. So not only storing things in memory, but in a database and as you can see there's code here that actually does user interface stuff so you'll get to see about how to create user interface stuff as well so you may be asking how is quokka prime from scratch different from quokka from scratch well everything that you see in this picture that has a green background has been changed with quokka prime the Application service, Quokka server is changed. The RESTful APIs, the database has changed. I have user interface stuff that shows the nice tables. The Quokka workers have been improved. And of course, all of the monitoring functionality that you see up there on the right is implemented separate from the actual service. So all of this has changed and it's simpler, it's better, it's easier to understand. And so if I were you and I was interested in learning how to do this, I would pay attention to this Quokka Prime from scratch. Now I just want to give you reference points from 52 weeks of Python into this Quokka Prime functionality. So as you probably know, the first few things that we do are all intermediate and basics. And then we begin to get into other stuff that we end up using. We'll talk about JSON and YAML. Those are both used in Quokka Prime. When we go on to networking stuff, Napalm is what I use to communicate with devices. So I talk about uh, Napalm and what I do with that. I then go on and talk about Scappy. 
Scappy is something that we use for packet capture and for trace route, so that is useful in there. Nmap is something that I use for port scan, and I'm also in this uh, Quokka Prime, I'm using it for doing host discovery. So you can see the relationship there with that stuff. I do do some object-oriented programming stuff. So uh, this object-oriented stuff, uh, these are object-oriented. I think my service monitoring has some object-oriented stuff in it. So object-oriented is going to be important for you to understand. And then we get to Flask. Flask, of course, is the central thing for our entire Quokka Prime application. So I'll spend a lot of time, well, a few weeks, talking about Flask, how we do stuff. And look here, host discovery and monitoring, and that will include even when I get to it, display, so that we will uh, be using our Flask uh, web service that's living right here that we built to take our uh, host monitoring func uh, data and put it into our Flask server and then be able to retrieve it for the host display. So we're gonna talk all about Flask in doing that. Then we get into databases, and as you can see, we're going to be dealing with databases and Mongo. That's all of this stuff. So that's how that relates. I do go into concurrency. So in order to make things more efficient, I've added concurrency to the device monitoring, host monitoring, service monitoring, host scan, etc. So we use thread pools, actually. But I do talk about different types of um, concurrency mechanisms. And then the last thing that I'll mention is down here, we use messaging. So we use RabbitMQ to send messages when a user requests, hey, I want you to do a port scan on a host or I want you to do capture of packets for a particular IP address. That's going to go through our messaging system, RabbitMQ, and our Quokka worker is going to wake up when it gets a message, perform it, and then it's going to send REST requests back with the data that then gets put into this database. So you can see in 52 weeks here, we cover just about everything that's going on here. But the main point of telling you this is to show you the relationship between these two. And if you wanna get a deep dive into what exactly I am doing in this code specifically, and not go through all of the courses or maybe go through the courses as necessary, then these next lessons that I do on Quokka Prime implementation will be of interest to you. So to summarize, in these videos, I will be going through all of the functionality that is part of Quokka Prime, explaining to you how I did it, what the code looks like, and why I made the decisions that I did. Hopefully you'll find it useful. Hey, thanks for watching this episode on Quokka Prime from scratch. I'm Chuck Black. If you do have questions or comments, feel free to leave a message with this video. I'm also on Twitter at Chuck A. Black. If you want to send email with a question, comment, or just to say hi, the email address you can reach me at is python.52.weeks at gmail.com. Also remember to subscribe to this channel. I hope these lessons are helping you to achieve your goals towards becoming a real software developer. So, so long for now and see you at the next episode.